So I'm going to start IMS Map 360. You see the program starts up fairly quickly. First screen you see is a basically it's just a startup dialog that lets you create a new scene or open an existing scene. I'm going to create a new scene. And you can see uh, with just a few clicks, you know, you're able to quickly start the program and get started. And so at this point, I'm ready to import data. But before I do that, I just want to talk about the interface. So we spent a considerable amount of time um, working on workflows or trying to simplify the, the interface to make it easier to use. And the default mode is called our sketch mode. And you'll see there's just four tabs. And I've I've had the opportunity now to do, I guess, I think it's three training sessions. And in a one-day course, I can train someone to use IMS Map 360 to import total station data or scan data and create a simple sketch in one day, no problem. And that just kind of gives you an idea of how, uh, how simple the product is to use, especially compared to some of our previous products, uh, especially the map scenes. So then this little blue, blue gear down here at the bottom, if you want, you can switch to, it's called our advanced mode. And when you switch to advanced, we then load up all of the features or functionality in the software. And you'll see when you do that, there's just a lot more tools available now for to the user. And some of our power users would are probably going to use advanced mode, but um, we're finding most of our users, for the majority of their work, they can just use sketch mode. And it, we've done a pretty good job at just ha uh, including the tools that you know are used 80% of the time. And most users can just use our sketch mode and, uh, and complete their sketches. So, so let's uh, import some data. So I'm going to start with importing an uh, Evans Recorder project. I'm just going to import. You can see how, how quick, quick that is. I'm just going to change the size of my text. I'm just going to go to the home menu and set this to a scale of 1, one to 10. And just like Captivate in Evans Recorder, I, I was the one who measured this particular scene. I collected line work as I measured the, the points. So what's nice about that is when you import that project, a lot of the, the drawing or the sketching is already done for you. And because things are already layered, I can quickly I'm going to go to the draw menu here and I'm going to turn off some of the layers here for the text just to clean up my drawing. like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some symbols. So again on the draw tab, I'm just going to click on symbol librarian. So this is our uh, tool that has 7,000 symbols and you'll see they are in categories so you can you know expand any of these categories and you can see all, all the different symbols that are available. You can also search for symbols by name if you want, or go to the favorites list, which is, or sort of my recent list here, which is what I'm going to do. Now I know I'm going to want to plot at a 1 to 20 scale, so I'm just going to insert my scale bar into my drawing. This SUV here was located in this location roughly right there. So the symbols come into scale. So if your drawing is in meters or feet, our system will automatically scale the symbols to match real world units. This bush, I'm going to insert that into this area right here. And 
and and then maybe we'll just insert one more vehicle somewhere there. Now, it's quite common that uh, when you're measuring the location of a vehicle, you'll you'll measure up a point on the ground at the wheel axles on the exterior of the vehicle, and these four points are represent the axles of a uh, Nissan Frontier. I don't have a Nissan Frontier in my symbol library, so this is where I'm going to use the, it's called the uh, Collada import, which is the Google SketchUp format. So you can click on this button here to go to the 3D warehouse. I'm just going to bring my, and at the top here you just, you can do a search. So if I was to type, do a search for Nissan Frontier, what it'll do is it'll search their database and bring up symbols of all the different Nissan Frontiers that you can import into IMS Map 360. And this one here I've already downloaded. So if you just click on a symbol, you practically all you do is you just download the file and it'll download as, as a zip. So once you've downloaded it, all you need to do is you just browse to where the file is. So this is where mine is. And it just happens to have the name model. And what we'll do is we'll convert that to a drawing symbol. Now some of these symbols, because they're symbols um, that users upload uh, for free, sometimes they're not always drawn to scale or sometimes the insertion points on them are in a weird location. So you're going to see here, You can I can just tell already that the symbol is not quite to scale. But to fix that, I'm going to use this command here called align. And I'm just going to pick my symbol. And then I'm just going to say I want to move this. So I'm just going to turn off. Uh, so I want to align the symbol, and I want to go from here to there, and then I want to go from, I mean my mouse is jumping around here, I want to go from here to there, and then I'm going to scale it, and you'll see our, what our program has done there is it's aligned the symbol to those two points, it scaled it, and then if I want this to look realistic, I can just go to the whole menu here and just tell it I want to use a realistic mode and then there's your symbol scale. Now if you want to put a dimension on this line here, maybe for some reason there's something important about dimensioning that in your drawing, you can just go back to the uh, sorry, the analysis tab, go aligned and I'm just want to set an endpoint. So here I'm just setting uh, my snaps. So I'm going to click on aligned. I'm going to go from endpoint to endpoint. Maybe the width of this stall is important to, uh, to label. So I'm just going to do that. So you can see how easy it is to dimension. Now if you, these are the built-in templates which reship some these two, but it's very easy to customize these templates. All you do is you, you double click inside a, we call it a viewport, and then I'm just going to do a zoom extend. And then what you can do is just zoom in, sort of position the objects where you, you need them to be. 